Good day, fellow learners. This is your mentor, your fact check by Dere Gapus, joining you once again. This time around, we are going to talk about case number 13 in this learning and teaching session that we're going to have today. So before that, may I once again knock in your kind-hearted spirits and please, please, please join us in this mission. Our goal is to provide free NCLEX RN application and review to 100 nurses. We actually plan to increase it to 300 this year. I'd like to take one of our NCLEX RN passers who wants to remain anonymous. She gave 20,000 pesos for this scholarship program. Thank you very much. May your tribe increase. Okay, to help us achieve this, just watch and finish the ads in our videos. And thank you for doing that in advance. Let me also make this public advisory before we get to start, Dr. Ray A. Gapus and the mentors of the Ray A. Gapus system, that includes me and of course my team, are not part of another center named Gapus Review Academy and we are in no way related to them. Okay, so just an advisory, if you don't see us in your class, it's not a Ray A. Gapus system class. So on to our next generation NCLEX RN case number 13. Okay, before we get to start, I'd like to congratulate Eunice. She's actually a, a class of 2023 graduate that is just last year. She became registered nurse here in the Philippines. And now after a couple of months, she passed NGN. Okay, so congratulations Eunice. And um, this is how she broke the news to me. Good afternoon, Posare. I'm thrilled to share the exciting news that I passed the NCLEX RN. And I say um, congratulations to you once again, Yunis, and thank you very much for your trust in our system. Now, on to our NCLEX RN alert, we will talk about macular degeneration. But before that, let me share with you one of the ingredients of the success recipe of Yunis in her recent NGN test. So I asked, um, was the Mplex 311 NGN edition helpful? And she says, yes po sir, binasa ko po talaga days before my exam. So she just shared that she read it a couple of days before she took the test. And I asked, are the concepts that are related to the test? And she says, yes sir Ray, wala pong nasayang sa review sir. What she's saying is everything that we had in the review helped her pass the test. So there's nothing there that did not help her. So for those of you who have yet to get a copy of NCLEX RN311, the next generation quick fix edition, grab your copy now and focus on the subject on the subject matter that is covered that are covered by subject matters that are covered by the book. More specifically, focus on the concepts contained in each of these page that I placed here. So once again, congratulations, Yumi. So let's discuss macular degeneration. So it's actually an eye disease affecting the central vision of people of the age of 50. So the peripheral vision is intact. It's the central vision that is affected. So you would expect people with macular degeneration to say that they have um, black spots in the middle of their visual field. Now, this is in sharp contrast to a client with glaucoma who would tell you about tunnel vision or loss of peripheral vision. So if there's a loss of peripheral vision, think about glaucoma. If there's a loss of central vision, think about macular degeneration. So in macular degeneration, central vision is affected while the peripheral vision is fine and intact. Now, what are the risk factors that could potentially lead to the development of macular degeneration. Now take note, this condition is treatable, but it is not curable, which simply means whatever function is lost in the eye could no longer be brought back to its normal state. However, we can prevent the progression of the condition. So the risk factors includes um, those that are contained in the mnemonic show ID. It's like show your ID and use your eyes to check on it. So smoking, having family history of macular degeneration. So check if the parents had it. If the client is overweight and if the client is white or Caucasian. So this is also common to those with increased 
blood pressure or those that are, have hypertension and those whose diet are high in saturated fats. So we can say, um, noting that you have here smoking, increased blood pressure, diet high in saturated fats, this could be in part due to um, unhealthy lifestyle. And of course, you have there also risk factor um, identified, one of the risk factors identified, overweight. But we're not discounting the fact that this could also be associated with familial predisposition as there could be families to relate to the disease and it could also be race related. So the common manifestations of macular degeneration include, number one, you have blurred vision and then you have LBC, low vision, blank spots, curvy or wavy lines. So if you get to um, ask the client what's the common disturbance that they would usually experience, when they are describing the symptoms related to this condition, you would notice that they would usually complain about straight lines not looking straight. What they used to consider as a good visual field when they are exposed to straight lines would now appear curvy or wavy. Thus, the test that is usually done for this client would be your ancillary grid test. So the client is usually shown straight lines that crisscross, and then you have a uh, dot in the middle and you will have to ask the client to describe it. And eventually this is the kind of description that they would talk about, that the lines are wavy, that they have a block spot in the middle or the lines are curvy, okay? So another test would be your fluorescent angiography. This involves injection of a dye, followed by the use of a camera to track where the dye would go. And usually this dye would reveal any leak that occurs under the macula. We also have your optical coherence tomography or OCT. It's a non-invasive procedure. All we have to tell the client is to look into a lens while the machine takes pictures. After that, the pictures are analyzed. And then you have your optical coherence tomography and geography that uses laser light reflection and OCT scanning, followed by um, the tracing of the blood flow through the eyes. And this would produce your 3D images. Okay, now treatment for macular degeneration includes um, the use of vitamins and minerals and antioxidants. Uh, vitamin C and E would usually be given zinc and copper. Now these vitamins would help in the preservation of the eyesight and it will delay the progression of the condition. On the other hand, your antioxidants would actually protect the cells from the damage caused by oxidation. So you have the zeaxanthin and of course, lutein. And these are the drugs that are used for wet macular degeneration. We call them the antivascular endothelial growth factor. So what is the mechanism of action of these drugs? First and foremost, it prevents the formation of blood vessels that grow abnormally. And these blood vessels that grow abnormally eventually would leak beneath the macula. So these drugs therefore prevents the formation of new blood vessels that could adversely affect the macula. And you have here your, our examples. You have your farizumab, ranibizumab, aflibercept, and bevacizumab. So pay particular attention on the suffixes. Zumab, ranibizumab, bevacizumab. So these are drugs for wet macular degeneration. I'd also like to highlight one important thing. Now, if you are given a case related to age-related macular degeneration or macular degeneration, you have to focus on the type because a client with dry macular degeneration should be referred to an optometrist. An optometrist is a doctor of optometry primarily tasked to adjust your lenses in your eyeglasses. And at the same time, they can treat eye conditions, but usually they can't perform surgical interventions. For clients with wet macular degeneration, initially you refer them to an optometrist and then eventually to an ophthalmologist. 
So an ophthalmologist is a doctor of medicine that has a specialized in eye disorders. So they can treat all sorts of eye disorders and at the same time can perform surgical intervention. So once again, if you have dry macular degeneration, refer the client to an optometrist. For wet macular degeneration, initially to an optometrist and then to an ophthalmologist. And if they would need um, adjustment to activities of daily living brought about by their blurred vision, then they can be referred to an occupational therapist. So here's our case number 13, a 71 year old white male. We have two risk, factor there, risk factors there. You have a client about 50 years old. And of course the client is Caucasian, white male. Comes to the emergency department complaining of dark spots in his vision. You have another outstanding uh, manifestation there associated with macular degeneration. He also tells the nurse, the pedestrian lanes look wavy and curvy. There you go. That sort of, it completes the group of factors that we're looking for in order to arrive at an inference of what the client's condition is. So this has made crossing the streets a challenge for him. So the nurse should anticipate treatment for the client to include is it one, myotics? Now, myotics, example, the pilocarpine, these drugs are given to clients with glaucoma and that macular degeneration. So midriatics, these are the drugs that dilate the pupils, example, to be your atrophin eye drops that are usually administered to both eyes before eye examination. Vitamin and mineral supplements, and of course, surgical extraction. Surgical extraction, this is actually an intervention for clients with, for example, tumor of the retina or when the client is suffering from retinoblastoma. So the best answer is definitely number three, vitamin and mineral supplements. This will help delay the progression of the condition and could help preserve the existing functions of the macula. So once again, let me invite you, join me in my 10-day boot camp Okay, so it's called the Quick Fix Bootcamp for NCLEX RN. It's going to be done in our new venue in Baguio City. It's going to be at the Mount Crest Hotel. So it's on November 13 to 24, 2024, from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Baguio City. So the uh, bootcamp would include copies of my pharmacology book, Nursing Reminder Sheets, the new edition of NCLEX 311, QBank Unlimited City, and then, of course, your course shell. So from our passer a while back, Eunice, I asked her which part of our review helped you the most. And her answer, all the systems materials offered, sir, was really helpful, really helpful. So from the comprehensive lectures, take home exams of our lecturers, bootcamp, course shell, now that is included if you enroll in the bootcamp, quick fix books, and even videos from your YouTube, all were helpful. So join our hundreds of thousands of passers from last count, 35 countries all over the world, including a 60-year-old who passed the test last year, and these passers who are growing each day. So the second most important thing that you have to remember when you're preparing for the NGN is to learn how to study technology because the test is technology-based. So here at the Ray Gapu system, our tools are published by world-renowned publishing companies, and of course, we have our own set of learning tools, including our own learning management system, which we call Ray Gapus Review System Core Shells that covers all the subjects that you'll find on the test from safety and infection control, basic care and comfort, health promotion, maintenance, management of care, pharmacological and parenteral therapies, physiological adaptation one, two, and three, reduction of risk potential and psychosocial integrity, you have it all. So please do inquire at our fund desk. This is one of the reasons why we are having a lot of passers. Your access is unlimited. And what makes this different is that you are given monthly updates. And the third requirement to pass NJN is for you to be in a conducive environment that should keep your focus. So the Ray Gapu system, we have our own NJN simulation laboratory and we keep our class size to a very comfortable level. So may I invite you to join me in my next generation NCLEX RN Flex, the most flexible test prep class for the NCLEX RN. The fee starts at 3,499 and you can choose your schedules 
you have weekdays, weekends, night classes, morning classes, holy classes, half day classes, two hours class, okay? And your choice of live face-to-face -face class, live virtual class, on-demand and limited video recorded lessons, your QBank and three books, plus the engine strategies and sample questions on yours truly. And of course, you'll be given the opportunity to join me in my NGN quick fix sessions. And that is done live here at the Ray Gapos Building, UN Avenue, Manila, Philippines. For those who are overseas or abroad, you can access it virtual live online. So once again, this is your mentor, your fuck check buddy Ray Gapos at your service. Good luck and God bless. So those who are taking the test within the week or within the month, and of course, Kindly visit our past videos and get familiar with those concepts and topics. And we wish you well. See you in our next learning and teaching session.